Hey everyone, so today we're in this New Zealand built motorhome. It's a two-bit motorhome and it's got a problem with the solar. So basically the complaint is that the battery is not being charged by solar. So this one's got a volt gauge fitted to it. So if we come down here and look at the volt gauge, we can see that it's about 12.5 at the moment. And if we look outside, it's an extremely sunny day. So I'll take you through the steps on working out what's the problem. At the stage where we're just diagnosing the problem, we'll basically need a multimeter or voltmeter. Because even though we've got this voltmeter over here, they do fault over time. I've seen a few of these that they do give problems. Voltmeter is inaccurate. It can mislead you, so you want one of these. So you need a good multimeter. And what we'll do is we'll start by finding or locating the battery. And on this particular model, which is a Renault, it's a Kia built camper. The house battery or the leisure battery sits underneath the seat, as you can see over there. And it's got the main switch over here, which is on. So you just connect up the positive to the positive side and the negative to the negative side and you connect it up to your multimeter and then you put it to volts DC or if it's an auto ranging meter you can just leave it to auto ranging DC. So we can see at the moment it's 12.36 or with an inaccuracy on the multimeter so it's about roughly 12.4ish. So now having established that the volt meter fitted to this camper is good we'll take this off and we already know now that the battery is not getting charged because the multimeter or the voltmeter has confirmed this if i recommend is to plug the camper in so you can establish that your 240 volt charger is working um, i've already done that and i know this one works so that's fine we'll move on to the next step so what we have to do next is identify or find out where the solar charge controller is so sometimes it's mounted near the house battery or the leisure battery so it just depends, it varies on your model. So you just have to check and find out. On the Kia built motorhomes, this varies from place to place. And stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed because I'll cover different models and a lot of other technical stuff in the future. But on this particular one, it is located behind the control panel over here. So it's held in by two screws and it's normally covered, which I've taken off here, there and there. So once you take that off and remove the two screws underneath there that hold it on, just go ahead and pull it out. This reveals the rear control panel section where the switches and also th these ones have fuses on them. Watch my other video if you want to see all of that in detail. So this is the solar charge controller. So our next point is now we'll check for voltage over here at the battery. We can already see that there's a light on here. So it indicates that the battery is okay. It's within the SOH or the state of health is okay. Hence the green light. Just by touching the positive and negative to the solar controller on the battery side, and again on the same volts DC, we can establish that it's the same voltage as we measured at the battery. So that tells me that all the wiring and everything from the battery, which is down there, to the controller is all good. So now we'll next step is to check the solar panel wiring. So the PV input is just at the bottom over there. These are terminal screws, so hence why I can just put my probes onto it directly. And it makes um, contact straight away. And by checking it here, there's basically no voltage. So that tells me that there's some there's a problem on this end. So from the battery side, everything is fine. But from the wiring to the solar panel, now we need to check that and see where the problem lies. So I've taken off the wires over here. Check the voltage. Again, it's zero volts. I've just taped them up just to prevent any short circuit. Even though it's zero volts, there's a problem now somewhere on this end. So if we follow the wiring, go up there, it goes up through here and it goes to the roof. Sometimes you'll find that there might be a fuse in line on the positive side over here. So just check that. That'll be my next point. Um, if there's a fuse, these early models don't have fuses. They just come directly to the solar controller. So I know pretty much from here, I'll just double check the solar wiring. And if that's all okay, the solar panel will be faulty. So now we're in the roof cavity over here and you can see where the wire is coming through. It's just joined up. So this is the PV solar wire over here. And as you can see, it's just joined up here. I've gone ahead already and checked the voltage here. So in case there was a fuse in line somewhere that possibly we could have missed, by checking it here, I've established that there's still no voltage at these points here. So that tells me that the solar panel is faulty. And this particular solar panel that's fitted to this camper is a stick-on solar panel. 
which I'll show you shortly. So you can see the wiring runs here and the entry point is here through the roof over there. So we'll go outside and I'll show you the solar panel. As you can see here now, we've gone ahead and installed the new solar panel. And if you had seen previously on that stick-on solar panel, I pointed out where the cells were damaged. So what happens is over time, the cells get damaged on those stick-on panels because they can't handle much heat. So as I pointed out on the roof, the stick-on solar panels I found from experience only last about seven to about eight to ten years if you're really careful with it and if it's parked under a carport or something similar. But when it's exposed to sunlight, and direct UV for let's just say over seven years each of the cells degrades and normally what happens is one of them short circuits and it basically shorts the whole panel out and that's why we had a zero volt condition and hence the reason why the solar charge controller was showing zero so I've gone ahead and put everything back together uh, it's a wet rainy day which you just saw now on the roof even though it's a wet rainy day but we are still got a little bit of daylight left at the moment you can see that the voltage is up to nearly 13 volts so that's why it's always good to check your solar panels and this is why it's important to do your annual check and just make sure all the electrics and everything are operating properly because this particular vehicle it was assumed that the vehicle was charging but as you just saw when i checked it it wasn't charging so hence why i needed that solar panel replacement normally rule of thumb is if you're running anything larger say like a 300 watt solar panel and above then you want to get a circuit break or get that fused but at the moment it's only a smaller 100 watt panel on the top so it's fine to run it straight to the controller get up to about over 250 watts on your solar panel uh, you'd want to look at fusing your the circuits or using a circuit breaker like i'll show you now so as an example this is a larger solar controller it's a 60m charge controller and this is a dc circuit breaker So that's the sort of thing you want to use once you get above 250 watts. You want to make sure it's fused or there's a circuit breaker in line for the solar panel on the roof. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope this video was of some help to you. Stay tuned. Like I said, I'm going to be covering a lot more technical stuff in the future. And a lot more RV content to come as well. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you do like and make sure you do subscribe for more interesting car and camper related content. Thanks for watching everyone. See ya.